Hi, this is Frank Schaefer, and I want to thank you for sharing my YouTube videos and for watching them. And I would ask you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps what I'm doing and get the word out. Thank you. Hi, my name is Frank Schaefer. And no, I have not been injured. I am just returning from a dermatology appointment at 72 years old, a good dermatologist trying to keep me alive. That said, I will make allusion to this Band-Aid because it's going to be hard for you to ignore this while I'm talking. And actually, that brings up something. It's hard for me as a grandfather of 72 and a father to ignore J.D. Vance, Donald Trump, and their cohorts, anti-woman, male, misogynistic stupidity. Why? Because I happen to be pro-family, pro-child, pro-woman. And I talk about these things. I write about these things. In fact, I'm working on a new book right now that's been five years in the making that talks about the pleasure I have in being a father and grandfather, the beauty that I have found in a long-term marriage relationship with Jeannie for 54 years. But I have a problem like this Band-Aid. It is the raw sewage pouring out of J.D. Vance's mouth when it comes to women, the cat ladies he famously talks about. But in old interviews that have been emerging this week, not that old, 2020, 2021, 2022, recent. You know, this isn't like something I said when I was 17 that I've grown past and taken back, like my work with Dr. Sierra Coop and my dad to make a quote unquote pro life movie series called Whatever Happened to the Human Race that really messed with the women of this country and led 50 years later to the overturning of Roe v. Wade that would not have happened without right-wing evangelical fundamentalist voters putting Donald Trump in the White House and then him loading the Supreme Court and federal judiciary with people who were carbon copies of with the Heritage Foundation, now currently making Project 2025. And the Federalist Society had been grooming, and I use that word carefully when it comes to people like Amy Coney Barrett, for 50 years plus to get young law students indoctrinated in their right-wing misogynistic way of thinking, advancing through the court system until Trump listening to people like right-wing leaders in the Heritage Foundation, the Federalist Society, people like Franklin Graham, the son of the evangelist Billy Graham, who I knew quite well, and I had met Franklin when he was a kid, whispering in his ear, let's overturn Roe v. Wade. And now Trump is flip-flopping all over the place. But What's the Band-Aid? Well, I have a couple stitches under here from a biopsy, and we'll see in a week or two if I need more work. But that, whatever that turns out to be is a lot less serious for me uh, than J.D. Vance, Donald Trump, and their fellow travelers are for women in this country. Why? Because these idiots have muddied the water and politicized something that should be above politics, very much like Donald Trump and his team breaking all the rules and politicizing Arlington Cemetery, where, by the way, my son would have been buried back in the early Afghan and Iraq wars as a Marine when he fought over there, two deployments to Afghanistan, one to Iraq. And before he left, he sat down with me and said, now look, if I get killed, um, I want to be buried in Arlington. I can only imagine what other Marine parents and soldiers and airmen, Navy and Coast Guard and others killed. In our wars, think about the fact that one candidate, one candidate who's a draft dodger, one candidate who badmouths my old friend, who I knew personally and campaigned for, John McCain, and said he was a loser who has literally crapped on the military at every turn. Well, where is this going? Because J.D. Vance in his anti-woman comments, not to mention hooking up with the guy who grabbed women by using his terms, I'm so sorry, the pussy and bragged about it, hooked up with a man accused of raping a child, of being basically 
the wingman, as it were, literally flying in his plane all the time to this child molesting son of a bitch who eventually got arrested and either committed suicide and or was murdered in prison, whose name I won't mention presently. But the fact of the matter is, J.D. Vance now, by politicizing having children, I think it's the dirtiest thing I've ever seen in politics. Because the fact of the matter is, when you look at the consequence of that, it means that re reasonable people, good people like my friend Paul Moreland, whose book is sitting here, who I interviewed, who wrote a book called Tomorrow's People and No One Left, or people dealing with family relationships like my friend Tia Levings and her wonderful book, A Well-Trained Wife, or my friend Matthew Barzan, who was the chief fundraiser for and the ambassador to the United Kingdom for Obama, who wrote a book called The Power of Giving Away Power. Or Brad Wilcox, a very serious conservative thinker at the University of Virginia, who wrote a book called Get Married. Or My American Dream by a, someone who I interviewed, uh, Barbara Fagan, um, who tells about her story of coming to America as an immigrant child and eventually becoming the first most powerful executive in the advertising industry back in the 60s and 70s. Why do I list these people? Because I've been talking to wonderful, serious people, some of whom are conservative Republicans all the way through to left-wing idealists. But what we all agree on is some things ought to be above reproach, not dirtied by political grubbing by J.D. Vance or Donald Trump going to Arlington and desecrating the tomb of our fallen soldiers. Isn't that something we can all agree on that shouldn't be done? Well, similarly, like this Band-Aid that you can't not look at, sorry, it would be worse if I ripped it off six stitches here. They aren't pretty right now. It was three days ago. But for those of us who love our children and our grandchildren, for those of us who are single by choice and love life because we contribute as teachers and friends and lovers to other people, to nieces and nephews, to family we love and who enjoy being single, but nevertheless are not anti-family. Most of the single people by choice that I know are not anti-family. We can all agree that there's some things like mother love or a grandfather like me cooking for his children and grandchildren after school every day that should be off the table from being besmirched and sullied and played with by the grubby little paws of a fraud like J.D. Vance, who, by the way, mocks Kamala Harris for being an Indian, or as Donald Trump mocked her for recently turning black, whatever the hell that means. And you can look at photographs of her dad and her parents and see exactly who she is, kind of like his birth certificate, racist bullshit with Donald Trump that Donald Trump pulled with Obama. But when J.D. Vance mocks women who don't have children, then how am I supposed to talk about the love of my children without sounding like I'm backing this fool? You know, I just want to say something. With role models like J.D. Vance and Andrew Tate, this kickboxer accused of rape, and all these other, quote, men, they aren't men to me, Really, you know, as a father and grandfather, pretty much a man who picks up kids in school and looks at my manhood as demonstrated by caring for the people in my life, not abusing and manipulating them. A guy like J.D. Vance who mocks a woman as a DEI hire, an affirmative action hire because she's Indian, who has an Indian wife, there's a marriage that's not going to last when this whole election thing's over and his wife remembers how she has been insulted by her husband because of her race, indirectly, by the way he insults a woman of her color, of her background, because of her race. This scum who does a thing like that. And the people who follow Donald Trump who think this is okay, oh, let's desecrate Arlington Cemetery to make a brief political gain by thumbs up in front of a soldier's grave. J.D. Vance, let's mock women who don't have children. So people who do love their children think, shit, am I, am I being political when I write something about the joy of parenthood? Now have I got to say, God damn it. I don't mean that people with make other choices are somehow bad. 
I mean, what's left? Mocking people who don't have kids means that he's mocking those of us who do. Because this is a sacred internal choice. It's something beautiful. You don't storm into a room where a baby's being delivered and rip it out of its mother and hold it up and make a political point. You don't storm into Arlington and thumbs up in front of a soldier's grave. Who are these insensitive, unpatriotic, inhuman males? Man, what a time to be growing up as a young man with these assholes. Donald Trump, J.D. Vance, Andrew Tate, and I'm sorry, Elon Musk inseminating all these women who work for him, marrying them, divorcing them, dumping them, dumping and criticizing a child of his because she's trans. Who are these guys? You know, I'm a gardener and I work with the soil and I make compost and I garden and I do things. And I'm on a property that was settled a long time ago here after the Native American tribe was driven off the land I now occupy. I'll put it that way. But, you know, sometimes I'm digging around in the garden and I dig up something. I'm thinking, shit, leave this alone. I don't know what that is. But let's just not dig any deeper here. Maybe I've hit a sore line, something bubbling out of the soil. I hit a sore line one time when I was repairing my driveway with a pickaxe. Took me a whole day to repair a section of pipe and turn off the toilets and my hands were filthy and I had a bleach can next to me because I knew I didn't want to get hepatitis B or C. You know, with Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, J.D. Vance mocking women, why is it that every time J.D. Vance talks about women, he's insulting them? I mean, what is wrong with this man? and insulting his own wife by reference to mocking Kamala Harris for being exactly the same person. Hey, they're both lawyers. If Kamala Harris is, is an affirmative action hire, so is his wife. By mocking women who don't have children, he's mocking my daughter and my daughter-in-law who do have children. He's mocking women's ability to choose and have agency. He's the same kind of guy that I imagine won't let go of genital mutilation in some countries in the world. He's the kind of guy who would get on fine with the Taliban, wrap them all in towels and skirts and head coverings and shoot the ones that ask for an education. Don't you understand these are the same people, J.D. Vance, Donald Trump, Andrew Tate, the Saudi princes who treat their women like shit, the people marrying off child brides. The people disrespecting our military. You know, I come out of the 60s when we hated Jane Fonda because she went to Hanoi and identified with our enemies in Vietnam. She did nothing compared to Donald Trump in Arlington. Thumbs up in front of a soldier's grave. Photo up. And if some official who's worked there for 30 years comes up in a protest, push him to the side. Literally shove him. Who are these guys? Who are these people? And who are the MAGA crowd who idealize this sort of behavior? It boggles the mind. Forget the politics for a minute. Just the insensitivity and the disgustingness of these people. They're a Band-Aid under which, let's hope there's not putrescence. Let's hope this isn't diagnosed as something serious where I need more surgery. Then I'll come back with a bigger bandage. And if I do, I'll thank my dermatologist for catching whatever this is early, so it doesn't kill me. Well, something needs to be excised off the U.S. forehead, and that is this disgusting, misogynistic, anti-American, unpatriotic, bullshit artist, Trump Vance, they're one guy. And all these fellow travelers, Andrew Tate and the rest, they're all the same guy. And as a grandfather and father who spent the summer working with my grandson on some building projects around my yard and glorying in the fact that he treats his sisters and his mom and his grandmother with respect, 
glorying in the fact that working together, I get to know what sort of a young man he is because he shows up and he works and he's kind and he's polite. He's what you want in a son. Do you want a J.D. Vance? Do you want a son to grow up to be a creep like this who mocks a woman the same color as his wife, who mocks women for not having children when I happen to know so many women who want kids and they have fertility problems? Is he making fun of them too? Is he making fun of the people who are single by choice? A rational choice, by the way, sometimes I think. After another day where I've driven grandchildren and tons of people in different directions every day, and I'm thinking, wow, I'm tired. Right now, I'd like to be childless once in a while, even though I love my children and grandchildren. Going to make fun of people for making other choices? Are you going to wander in and be the kind of person and I'm sorry to make this comparison, but these are filthy little guys. You know, they're the sorts of people, J.D. Vance, Andrew Tate, Donald Trump. These are the guys that in other iterations are doing upskirt photography in subways and posting it online and using AI to turn pictures of women that have run afoul of them into porn. Forget politics for a minute. I object as a man who tries to be a role model for my grandsons and glories for the, in the fact that they, they've turned out to be so far decent humans who are friends and respectful to both boys and girls and men and women of all ages. You know, I was so pleased the other day, my wife was paid a great compliment. My granddaughter, who's 16, who just had a 16th birthday. I have a granddaughter who's 30 too. Hey, when you get somebody pregnant when you're 17 and 18 and you're married 54 years, there's a lot of history, okay? My 16-year-old granddaughter said, Nana, she calls Jeannie that. You know, we had a thing at, sc at school with my, my six friends, my best friends who are girls. And she, by the way, she also has boys who are friends, just saying. And, and they were all comparing notes of the family members they knew of each family saying, when you get old, Jeannie's not old to me, but she's old to them. When you get old, who do you want to be like? And they all voted unanimously saying, the person we want to be like is like your grandmother. And I, I was so thrilled by that. Yeah, I'm an egomaniac. I'm proud of my wife. You got a problem with that? I'm proud of my daughters. I'm proud of my granddaughters. And I will love them whether they choose not to have children or whether they're trans or gay. Or if they fall out with me and change their way of life. Do you think anything in the world would make me denounce my own flesh and blood, whatever choices they made? And guess who is my flesh and blood? Every man and woman on this planet. They are my family. They are my family. With or without children. With or without cats with or without brown skin. I have so had it with Andrew Tate, J.D. Vance, and Donald Trump to take these three misogynist pigs. And I have so had it with a cult that used to have evangelical Christian members in it who have turned into this personality cult worshiping, and not just worshiping anybody, but the worst cult leader I can remember since that asshole took them all into the forester, the jungle, and made them drink Kool-Aid and poison them all as a demonstration of loyalty to him. Well, something worse is going to happen. By the way, Trump still won't commit to accept the result of the next election. So these same people who stormed the Capitol will be back doing some other asshole thing. And you better believe at the center of it will be this misogynistic, stinking, stupid note one last time. For those who are ready to vote for someone who desecrates Arlington and who throughout his life has been a peeping Tom and molester and boasted about, who is has a running mate now who is the front man for this misogynistic cartel that runs around disparaging women, whether it's their color or their marital status or whether they have children or not. Let's offer them one big resounding shouted, no, we are done with you people.
My name is Frank Schaefer.